Hello, calculus students. This is our first recorded lesson in our new distance learning online program to finish out the semester. So the next lesson on our agenda was lesson 17, related rates. This comes from textbook section 4.1 directly. So these are the same examples used in the textbook. I thought normally we would pre-read the textbook and then meet for a lesson and tie it together. But since we're no longer meeting, it might be better instead of having you pre-read the textbook just to have me explain and walk you through some of the textbook examples. And then, of course, as I feel necessary, I'll add my own examples. Now, along with this video lesson, there is a four to ten question Canvas assignment. The questions are based directly on these examples. So if you're watching the video and following along, you can simultaneously answer the Canvas questions or you can answer them after you're done taking the notes. I am going to ask that you submit the notes that you've taken to me through Canvas so that I can make sure everyone is following along and we'll do this for our classroom community points. So as you can see, the very first thing in our notes is a problem solving strategy. Solving related rates question is very procedural based and it's going to tie directly into skills we have such as implicit differentiation and using the chain rule to find a derivative. The key to a related rate problem is that we're going to take two quantities, real world ap applicable quantities that are related to each other. So the first example is a volume problem. We have a few distance problems using Pythagorean theorem. Really any two quantities that are directly related to each other, we can use for a related rates problem, assuming that something is changing. Something is moving, growing, shrinking, something is has a rate, has a derivative, okay? So our strategy that we're gonna do for these next four examples is to draw a figure, find an equation relating the variables, stating in terms of the variables all of the given information and what it is we're solving for, taking a derivative, and then solving the equation. So let's look at example one, inflating a balloon. A spherical balloon is being filled with air at the constant rate of two centimeters cubed per second. How fast is the radius increasing when the radius is three centimeters? So step one, we really wanna draw a picture and I'm gonna to attempt to draw something spherical over here, maybe make it look three dimensional. Here's our sphere. And then maybe label our quantities directly on the sphere. So a sphere has a radius, R, and then of course the volume on the interior. So the formula that goes with this is the volume formula for a sphere. Anybody remember that from geometry or perhaps science class? It is four thirds pi r cubed. Now we're gonna go through this information and we see the first piece of given is that you have a constant rate of two centimeters cubed. Now rate tells us that we're talking about a derivative d dt, so with respect to time, seconds is a unit of time. And then the question is how fast is the radius increasing when the radius is three centimeters? So this not only tells us that r is equal to three, but it also tells us that we are looking for dr dt. How fast is the radius changing with respect to time. So with this in mind, we are ready to use the chain rule and differentiate both sides with implicit differentiation. So we're gonna go over here and we're going to derive the variable v. It's to the power of one, doesn't have anything else. So this derivative is just dv dt with respect to over here, keep in mind that pi is not a variable, it is a constant. This is a really common mistake. This is not product rule. These are all just constant multipliers. The variable here is r, and we've got some power rule going on. So we're gonna bring the three out front, leave our 
coefficients and then reduce our exponent by one and then don't forget to apply the chain rule. We took this derivative with respect to t. From here, we're going to plug in our given information and see if we can solve for what we're looking for. So let's start with dv dt. How fast is the volume changing? Well, the balloon is being filled with air, and if you look at your units, it's centimeters cubed, which is your clue that this value right here, well, maybe I should have done it in blue, this value here is your changing volume, since cubed is three-dimensional and volume is three-dimensional. Then we've got this, which is going to simplify down to being 4 pi r squared, where r is 3, and then dr dt, it's also a variable, but that's what we're solving for, and so we're going to let it be a variable. Simplify that down and isolate the dr dt. So we have got 2 equals 36 pi dr dt. which means that dr dt is equal to 2 over 36 pi or 1 over 18 pi and then we're going to need a unit. So I did not put any units in when I did this problem. And I'm going to go back and correct that because I want to make sure everyone understands what the unit of this problem should be. So this was centimeters cubed per second. R was centimeters squared up here. We've got centimeters squared. So right here, we've got centimeters squared. And if we divide those, the centimeters cubed divided by the centimeters squared is going to leave us with centimeters per second. Now, in a real life problem, exact well, in mathematics, exact answers are usually preferred over rounded answers. But in a real life problem, saying that the radius of the balloon is increasing 1 18, over 18 pi centimeters per second doesn't really give us any context. So we do want to go ahead and divide this and provide a rounded answer. And so I am getting that the radius is changing at about 0.01 eight centimeters per second. And then this is really important because this is not an end all be all solution. This is how fast the radius is changing when the radius is three centimeters. This does not apply to the entire problem. This is not the rate the entire time that the balloon is being filled. Ooh, beautiful handwriting. Radius is three centimeters. So there's our first example. And at this point, you can pause the video and go ahead and answer the follow-up question in Canvas, or you can continue to the next video and watch all four before answering the problems in Canvas.